The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazic Seeds. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete Real Agriculture, and I'm here shooting an episode of The Sharp Edge with Greg Stewart from Mazex Seeds. Greg, we are going to make growers sharper today by helping them understand how to get more yield. Uh, and understand is the key word, Pete, because we're going to talk about test weight versus kernel weight because the two do not mean the same thing and they often get us confused when we're trying to understand where corn yield is coming from. Yeah, I'm not sure you even understand yield at all, Greg, because I was with a grower, you were there, you on the yield tour, your oh, famous yeah. yield tour, right? And you counted corn kernels and you, 225 was your yield estimate. We took the plot off the other day, 265, uh, and you're yeah. way out. Well, that can only mean, right, that uh, the mass of the kernels, the actual weight of the kernels, the size of the kernels was heavier than we had, what we had estimated. Because we can count, right? Everyone at Mazex can count. Well, we can, maybe not you. Well, maybe not me, but we can count years, we can count kernels, but you have to sort of estimate what the kernel mass is going to be. And so if we miss the kernel mass, and this year there's some heavy corn out there, right, big kernels, and if you miss that, 225 turns into 265. So wait a minute, kernel mass, so the yield components on, on the corn are cons consist of what, Greg? Ear count, rows around, and length, so you get total kernel number, and then an estimation of what those kernels weigh. How many kernels does it take to make a bushel? Right, so if, if I have those big heavy kernels, I get to 265, right? Right. right. But if I have those big heavy kernels, not only do I get to 265, I'm gonna have what, 55 pound test weight? Ah, uh, only we wish, right? It doesn't happen that way. In fact, the, some of those 265 growers come back and complain to me and say, well, yeah, you missed it real bad, but why do I have 51 pound per bushel corn when my yields are through the roof? Because the size of the kernel does not necessarily mean how well they fit into a half liter cup to give you test weight or density. So in actual fact, the 265 that the grower weighed was 51 pound test weight. Ah. His comment was 51 pounds, that's pretty sad. If only, if only we could have had a 56 pound test weight, that's basically 10% more yield. Add 10% onto 265, man, that's yield. That's pushing 292, <laughs> 300 is in the, in the range. Right on. Well, unfortunately, it just doesn't add up that way when you're doing yield component. Test weight isn't even part of the discussion. It's how heavy the kernels are. Whether they fit into a, whether they fit into a density cup well or not so well, it's a different story. But I have a nice example of, of that same sort of idea. I've got a couple of hybrids on the table, 40-40, 20 rows around right 36 rows long that's a lot of kernels yep. nice right? cur nice cobs yep. and then i put it up against 4158 generally 14 16 rows around and isn't long enough to give you more cobs to, to more kernels it's generally about 50 kernels short of the 4040 in this example so but the 4040 is going to yield more it's got would, more kernels on yield tour this wins right you get to the combine and if these kernels are much heavier, not test weight heavier, mass heavier, what a thousand kernels weigh as an example, then this one goes shooting past this hybrid, not because of kernel number or ear count, but because of how heavy the kernels are. So the kernels on this one are, look at those kernels. Holy Greg, you shelled some and oh my gosh, look at, those are massive yeah. versus these ones. Yeah, sort of average. And you can see why less kernels are going to have more weight than more kernels. Right. And that's why it, you don't know for sure by kernel count which one's going to win. Right. And test weight doesn't help you decide. Those two hybrids right there could put them into your mini GAC, right? Right. And they could have almost identical test weights, right? But here, I've got a thousand kernels that weigh considerably more than a thousand kernels in that hybrid. So test weight is really about volume 
and how those kernels fit, how those kernels fit into the, the, the volume, right. and it has really nothing to do with yield. Yeah, for the most part, at least it doesn't help you understand yield. Sometimes there can be a relationship that big, heavy corn that yields a lot can have pretty good test weight, but it doesn't always work that way. Yep. So when we're looking at yield components, we want heavy, heavy kernels. So we want those big, heavy kernels. And we look at test weight, we're looking at something totally different. What we're really looking at is how do the kernels fit into that volumetric measure? How do we get more kernels in there or the kernel density? And even the waxiness of the kernels could actually right. have a fairly Whether significant time. Whether they slip time. past each other better. Right. Yeah. And, and the shape of the kernels, right? The shape of the kernels and whether or not the, they fit together. Maybe that's why soybeans and wheat always have a 60 pound test weight because they just fit together better than those silly, funny looking corn kernels that couldn't have yeah, a yeah. decent shape to save their life. I've heard of wheat that someone mentioned it one time, but yeah, the soybeans for sure. Yeah, so, so, so we, the component analysis, if we really want to understand component analysis, we have to know a thousand kernel weight. I think that's the piece that we need to add to the discussion. You know, we're in, when we're harvest time, everyone's got test weight right? But how many people have good measurements of what a thousand kernels weigh? If, if I can give you a good measurement of a thousand, the weight of a thousand kernels, and I know ear count, and I know ter total kernels, and now you tell me what a thousand kernels weigh, I can have a really nice discussion as to why a hybrid won or lost because I know all the components. Test weight is not going to tell me why a hybrid won or lost in a plot. Right, so when I go to the plot and I, and I weigh that plot, and I get, I don't know, I weigh that plot and it's 11,200 pounds, well that's 200 bushels, right? And if it's 50 pound test weight, and I say, well, if it was 55 pound test weight, I'd have 10% more yield. That's not really true because I weighed 11,200 pounds, whether it's 50 or 55 pound test weight, I'm weighing 11,200 pounds and I'm dividing by 56. You're dividing by 56, so, that's what you're doing. So, so then Greg, do we just kick test weight to the curb? Does it matter at all? I think in some scenarios, there is an indication that test weight is important. For example, Peter, you're moving corn to Ingredion in a truck. Yep. Test weight's gonna matter how efficiently you move that corn to Ingredion. If I have 55 pound test weight corn and I can haul 40 ton in a load and I have to haul 400 ton to Ingredion, that's 10 trucks. If I have 50 pound test weight corn, it's going to take me more than 11 truckloads to get there. 11 truckloads won't do it. I got a little bit left over. I'm at 39, 600 pounds and 1100 truckloads. That's, so test weight matters, but not in terms of the yield or the component. It's just how those kernels fit together. And when growers say to me, yeah, higher test weight, more yield, that's not true. So, so okay, Greg, that's all well and good. But at the end of the day, I get paid on yield, who cares, test weight, they, they dock me if I'm low test weight, quality, whatever, but why would I ever bother doing 1,000 kernel weight? What, what, how does it help me? It's a good question, Pete, and I think the answer comes back, it's really a nice way, maybe the only way to completely analyze where your yield came from. We beat growers up all the time about planting depth and getting enough ears, right? And uniformity. And, and uniformity, and then we can talk about the number of kernels on an ear, but if we don't have that 1,000 kernel weight, we don't know as much. For, for example, if you've got problems with tar spot or, fun, or, or your fungicide or no fungicide, if I know 1,000 kernel weight, I can give you a much better answer as to what tar spot did for you or why your fungicide gave you 10 or 15 bushels extra yield. Because most of the time, if I do a VT fungicide, I'm not getting more kernels on that cob, I'm getting bigger kernels. Absolutely. So I need to know that 1,000 kernel weight. Very, very cool, Greg. Very cool. Uh, another sharp edge, making growers sharper. Hopefully, you understand that relationship better now between 1,000 kernel weight and test weight. And test weight matters, but not when it comes to yield. Peter Johnson, at Wheat Pete, Real Agriculture, another sharp edge. <laughs>